And from passing a law to move up the election to postponing oversight hearings, it could make the governor look bad. Critics argue that lawmakers have been using their power to protect the governor ahead of the recall. CBS 13 investigative reporter Julie Watts is taking a closer look at the blurry line between politician and public servant during a recall. 80% of all eligible Californians having received at least one dose. At an Oakland vaccine clinic last month, the governor seamlessly pivoted from encouraging people to get vaccinated to discouraging people from voting for a backup candidate. Simple, no vote, don't in turn the page, consider the other 46 questions that are being asked. It's a not so subtle election season dance, switching between state official and politician, and the governor's not alone. It's a simple ballot. It's a ballot with two questions on it, really. Secretary of State Shirley Weber a Newsom appointee struggled to find the right impartial words during a get out the vote press conference with Attorney General Rob Bonta. And the second question is, if for some reason you want uh, he is recalled, who would you have won his, as his replacement? Cal Matters Emily Hoven says her pause speaks volumes. The sort of pause on if for some reason you would want to, I think she kind of realized I need to choose more neutral wording just so that that can't be misinterpreted. Hoven's been reporting on the blurry line between politician and public servant during a recall. And while Weber may be in the most awkward position of administering an election that could oust the man who appointed her, there's a perception that lawmakers have unapologetically closed ranks around the governor. So it creates this very complex dynamic where you have lawmakers and the governor who are all of the same political party changing their own rules as they go along because they can. First, there was the election date itself, moved up in an effort to capitalize on the governor's approval ratings and avoid an election during a potential fall COVID surge and peak wildfire season. Just a few years ago, they actually lengthened the recall process in an attempt to protect another Democratic state senator. And then this time, they're actually reversing their own rules they just made to move up the election for the governor. And Hoven was first to report that a key EDD oversight hearing was postponed until after the election, citing scheduling conflicts the same week lawmakers canceled a wildfire oversight hearing prompted by a cap radio investigation that was critical of the governor. You know, it does raise the question of how are you prioritizing certain topics? What is driving those decisions? Now, the Democratic chair of one of the EDD committees also said they wanted to wait until the federal unemployment benefits ended in September. But whatever the reason for any of these decisions, the perception underscores the challenge of playing both politician and public servant amid an election. One vote and done. We should all want to make sure that our voices are heard.